Welcome everybody. Happy Wednesday. Happy 111. Did you guys realize that? 111 today? Catherine says good morning. Katie says good morning everyone. Welcome Katie. Bonnie says good to be here. Happy belated birthday Bonnie. Beautiful, beautiful. How is everyone? I saw you last on Friday. I am just thriving in this Mercury retrograde, and this is one of the times that I am actually recognizing it. Um, I was born with natal Mercury retrograde, and I feel like my thoughts are just so clear right now. Like, this is what my soul wants is when Mercury is retrograde. So yeah, let me know if you guys too, if you were born with a natal Mercury retrograde, if this just feels better to you. I feel like I have more words, uh, like my words come easier, my ideas come easier, I'm thinking of things like left and right. Yeah, it's, I love it. Dog hair, sorry about that, gross. Who else is here? Hello, Lucy. Good morning, Jennifer. Blessings from Charlotte. Hello, Jackie. Greetings, lovely friends. Happy belated birthday, Bonnie. Good morning, Anne. Good morning, Sharon. Welcome back. Hello, Suzanne. Chris, good morning. Joy, good morning. Welcome, welcome. Jackie says, no Mercury retrograde, but the past week has been blissful in mind and spirit. Yes, you mentioned that. I'd love to hear more about that. How is the start of everyone's 2023 going? This magical year of the seven, this mystical year, the year of truth, the year of spiritual awakening. Hello, Jess. Christine says, hi, Jackie and Tribe. Welcome. This year is starting like the, the ripple effect of all of these outer planets changing signs. I started talking about this at the end of Friday's session, so if you hung out with me for the extra time, you heard a little bit about it. However, in um, just real quick, guys, I feel like this spiritual awakening has been happening for a long time, right? Mayan calendar 2012 is when the world ended. I feel like that's when our level of consciousness ended. Um, and even back then, before I was even into all this woo-woo stuff, I knew that something was different. I knew that, you know, the world wasn't going to end, but I knew that something was going to be different. Hello, Dr. Monica. Welcome. I think I said hi to Jess. If I didn't, hi, Jess. Um, so yeah, it's been a long time coming. Energies have been shifting, all this stuff and stuff. And then we're coming into a time where within these next four years, the four outer planets are changing signs. And let me think math really quick. I have these numbers written down somewhere, but I just don't keep them in my brain space. But Saturn is changing signs and Saturn takes about 30 years to orbit around the system. Uranus is changing signs, and Uranus, I think, is uh, it's more than that, right? More than 30 years. I don't remember off the top of my head. Neptune is changing signs within the next four years. That's even further out than Uranus. Neptune takes, what is it, 188 years for Neptune to orbit all the way around. Um, and then Pluto is also changing signs, and Pluto takes like 250 years to orbit all the way around. So all I'm saying is that... <laughs> What are the odds, right? Like nothing's a coincidence. Hi, Helen, good morning. Um, what are the odds and like how lucky are we to be in this time where all four of these planets are gonna be shifting into their a new sign? In 2023, Saturn changes signs. Saturn is entering Pisces this year. We'll get a snippet of Pluto in Aquarius, but he's gonna back backtrack into Capricorn, but so 2023, Saturn changes signs. 2024, Pluto officially switches into Aquarius. 2025, Neptune switches into Aries. 2026, Uranus moves into Gemini. So the pull that the outer planets have on our society, on everything, on the entire world, all of that is in this process of shifting into something new. What does that newness look like? 
that's up for us to decide, right? Like astrology gives us the blueprint. It tells you what energies are available and it's up to us to create, right? co-create with the universe what it is that we want. What we know as a fact is that these planets are shifting into a new sign. So what can we do with that? We can leave a bunch of stuff behind and we can start this new earth that we have been dreaming of for so long. So I'm glad I got that out in the beginning because this is something that I'm just like, every time I think about it, like I, I vibrate on the inside. Like I'm so excited about all of this change coming. Christine says, Mercury is in my 12th house. Not sure what that means. I've been feeling so much more energetic in the morning. I love it, Christine. Mercury is um, thoughts, ideas, communications. 12th house has to do with self undoing and releasing the ego. So maybe Christine, this whole incarnation for you is thinking about how to undo the, the ego side of yourself. And I wonder what Mercury retrograde would do to that. Interesting. Have you been doing a lot of inner work since when did Mercury Mercury retrograde uh, December 29th? Interesting. Helen, I said good morning to you. K Grand Rising, Carmina. Whoa. Sharon, it says, Jackie, have you heard about the article from NASA saying there's an additional zodiac sign? How is that possible? Are you referring to, oh my gosh, I just had it. It starts with an O. Uh, I hope you guys get the thing. Oh, Ophiuchus, that's right. Um, yes, I've heard about Ophiuchus. I have, uh, I don't have a opinion about it yet. I can see it going either way. Um, the Vedic astrologists, I believe, follow the 13 sign zodiac cycle. Um, I, it's too much to get into now. I don't know what to think about it, but sit with it. See if it resonates with you. Maybe look up your own natal chart with that 13th sign. Um, I'm sure with a quick internet search, you can figure out like how to do a free natal chart using Ophiuchus and then see where your planets lie and it might make more sense to you. <laughs> yes. Um, yeah, I could talk about theories and stuff for days. Ophiuchus. Um, Jess, I just learned about how this is irrelevant to astrology because the astrological wheel is a unit of measure and not the actual signs across the ecliptic. Interesting. So let's talk about Mars retrograde today. That's what we're here to talk about. Um, so again, just remembering that today is 111. New, 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 right? One is the number of beginnings. Triple it up, angel number, all that jazz. It like amplifies the energy of the number. So we are here with this, we're gifted this energy of this new beginning the day before our planet of energy stations direct, right? So Mars retrograde has been occurring since October 30th. So if you can think through November, think through December, think through the first two weeks of this month, um, your energy Mars has been retrograde. So reviewing all of your um, the points in Gemini. So Gemini is the sign of the mind. It's mutable air, so it has to do with changing your mind. Mars has been retrograding from 25 degrees of Gemini back through 8 degrees of Gemini, where he is right now, and he will be moving forward tomorrow. So if you want to look at your chart, and maybe this might uh, clue you into what, like where this wishy-washy energy has been in your life, uh, like an unsure feel. I want to pull my energy in this direction, but I'm also wanting to pull my energy into myself, but I think I want to do this, but I feel like I want to do this. Uh, second guessing yourself, flip-flopping, being indecisive may have been uh, in your energy since October, November. Um, this could appear like you kind of want to come to Jackie's retreat, but you don't really know, like your body says yes, but your mind says no. So all joking aside though, um, I looked at my own chart to relate this to myself in order to help you guys understand a little bit better. So 25 degrees of, of Gemini in my chart is in my fifth house of creativity, 
of children. So he started his retrograde in my fifth house and then he came back in through the fourth. So fifth house, creativity, children, I've been trying to get pregnant for some time, you know, and I didn't like piece it together like, oh, Mars is retrograding through my fifth house. Let me rethink my children and all that stuff. It, this is a reviewing process. I reflected this morning and I looked at where he was and like, man, November, December, like I didn't really, I wasn't really like excited to keep trying. I kind of put it on the back burner. Um, I haven't like given up, but I've definitely stepped that energy back in my life. Um, and I've been, you know, like reviewing the, the approach that we've been taking, review, like looking for more information about different, you know, like natural ways to conceive and all that kind of stuff. And my energy has pulled back in the fifth house children area of my life. And then Mars retrograded back into my fourth house of home comfort, right? Um, my attitude about what it means to keep a clean home has also shifted. Like my energy is less anxious about keeping a clean home over the last few months. My energy is more, it just feels better to me to keep things tidy than it has in the past. So those are just ways that the Mars retrograde has shown itself in my life to see if maybe you can align in any way. Uh, and then I also looked at my husband's chart. So this whole, Mars retrograde happened in his fourth house of home, right? And I was talking about it the other day. He finally decided on New Year's Day, January 1st, we finally had the conversation that he doesn't want to work for someone anymore. He wants to be his own boss. So Mars retrograde, right? The energy coming into his home house, it reignited his passion for his home. He wants to work here. Um, he was able to revisit his ideas of what it means to have a home. You know, like he just wants to be here with us, with his family. He doesn't want to be at a job anymore. So thinking about uh, just those kind of energies, maybe look at your chart between where 25 degrees of Gemini and eight degrees of Gemini fall. So if you're, if you're not quite sure how to do that exact thing, if you look for the Gemini glyph in your natal chart, um, it's the one that looks like a pie sign with another line on the bottom. So kind of like a, uh, Pretty, it's pretty much the whole section of Gemini. So then you can look at to like the center of the chart to see what numbers are there. And again, just a quick internet search. What does the seventh house represent? What does the eighth house represent? That kind of stuff, um, just to get the wheels turning. Or if you wanna go deeper into astrology, you can check out the course that I have here on Insight Timer. Uh, what's it called? Astrology 101, basic overview of astrology so that when events like this happen, you're able to relate them back to your personal life. Um, Kate, Katie, oh my god, that has a thousand percent been me. I had two concussions and a stroke in the first week of November, my goodness, and have been doing nothing but working on my mind. I mean, if that's not a slap in the face from the universe, Katie, I don't know what is. I, I love astrology for that reason, right? I don't use it to anticipate so much, you know, like I just talked about all those large shifts in the outer planets. I know something's going to happen. I don't know what, and I'm not going to spend my time worrying about what. I'm going to spend my time getting excited about it and understand, you know, like being in the moment. With Katie's situation, right, this is why I like to use astrology in retrospect, like what was happening around this time? Oh, Mars turned retrograde? Like, the universe wanted to knock me on my ass. <laughs> it wanted me to rethink, right? Gemini, mental. I needed to change my life, but I'm stubborn. Yep, that's what the planets are here to do. They kind of slap us in the face every once in a while to make sure, like, hey, are you listening? We've been trying to help you, but you're not picking up the signs. So we're going to make sure that you pick up the signs. So for about the last week, Mars has been slowing down. So he's been like in reverse since October 30th and, and he's been putting his foot on the brakes. So his energy has been slowing. It might not have been as racing for the last week. Today and tomorrow, he's coming to that complete stop before tomorrow he shifts it back into drive. So he can slowly start accelerating through this next week. So I wouldn't expect that tomorrow you're going to wake up and be like, I'm going to accomplish all my dreams right now. 
but you might have a little bit of extra oomph, a little bit of extra motivation to take that next step uh, and focusing on that first step, right? This is being aspected harmoniously by two planets. So Venus is trining Mars right now. A trine is a harmonious aspect that is just available. You don't really need to do anything about it, like the energy is just there. Venus is at 10 degrees of Aquarius right now. And if you were with me the day that Mercury stationed retrograde, I talked about Venus and Mercury, how they were conjunct and then Mercury started walking backwards. <clears throat> and it was almost as if Venus the planet of love gave Mercury like a little kiss on the cheek saying like, mm, have a good journey. And then Mercury walked away. So seeing this Venus trying Mars right now, as Mars is starting to walk away from her, how I'm seeing this. And first let's talk about Venus and Aquarius. Venus represents money as well as love. Aquarius is on our own terms. So there's this energy in the skies right now that we want to make money on our own terms. We want freedom in our love life, you know, create the relationships on our own terms for the good of all and harm to none. Aquarius energy, very humanitarian. So if we think of Venus and Mars as like, so it is the divine feminine and divine masculine, but I didn't feel this marriage compatibility when I was thinking about this. I felt like girlfriend, boyfriend. Um, and this trine aspect, like, you know, when you're at a place and someone is right in your eye shot and you can't stop looking at them for some reason, like as much as you don't want to look at them, they're just right there. So I feel like this is where Venus and Mars are right now. Like they're right, they can see each other, even if they try to look away. Um, and they don't want to make eye contact, but they can't help it. It keeps happening. And Mars just has this feel like, dang, I really want to impress that girl. Like, I really want to show her what I can do. Like, look at this, lo this free loving lady over there. I'm going to, I'm going to impress her. So he's going to start walking forward and do what he can to amplify that energy of freedom of money, freedom of love, right? This is also um, happening sextile to Jupiter. So Mars is sextile to Jupiter right now. It's a wide sextile and sextile energy is harmonious, but you really need to lean into it. You really need to understand that it's there and consciously choose to use the sextile energy. So Jupiter right now is at two degrees of Aries. And Jupiter is the planet of expansion. Aries is the first sign of the zodiac, this new beginning energy, representing our first steps, taking, taking those first steps with childlike wonder, right? Taking those first steps with this enthusiasm, maybe seeing those new steps through the lens of novelty, right? Not taking things too seriously, letting Jupiter expand that energy. So if you choose to view life in this way, as you begin to pull your energy forward again, pull your momentum forward, Jupiter will support you in your efforts. This is also happening. It's, we're still in Capricorn season, right? We're still in Capricorn season for nine more days. Cardinal Earth is planning to me. It's, it's your, your planning stage. So with this, you know, like the past couple weeks with Mars retrograde, your energy pulled back with Mercury still retrograde, your mind might be reviewing. You might not even have had the motivation to start making plans of what you want. You know, you might've been like, you know what, I'm, I'll just do it later. And that's totally fine, right? You don't have to do everything right now. So this Mars direct energy might give you that, that excitement to even put notes on paper. Start dreaming out the life that you want. Start writing down and making concrete lists of exactly what it is that you want. We have next week, a week from today, Mercury is stationing direct, so our thoughts will get back on track moving forward, less rethinking, right, and more forward thinking. And then next weekend, so not this upcoming weekend, but after Mercury goes direct, that Sunday, 
Uranus stations direct. Uranus has been retrograde since August. So Uranus will station direct on the 22nd. Um, and that in itself, that whole weekend, guys, like I'll, I'll be here next Friday and it's probably going to be an hour and a half session just because of all the astrology that's going on. But we have um, Aquarius season starts, then we have a new moon in Aquarius, then we have Uranus who rules Aquarius moving forward. So just lots of this fresh new energy coming within the next week and a half. So I have the hook campfire sound playing today because I was figuring that uh, Mars was a little spicy, a little fiery, you know, so let's bring the fire energy into Insight Timer. Um, yes, Suzanne, Mars will stay in Gemini a while longer in her first house. Um, Mars will be in Gemini... I didn't look this up, but if Mars is moving forward at 8 degrees of Gemini right now, probably for the next two months, um, it's just my guess. I haven't looked it up. My apologies. I'm not 100% prepared for all your questions today. Okay, what energy does Uranus rule? So Uranus is unexpected changes, lightning bolt, earthquake event, um, like the tower in, in um, tarot, you know, things are just sudden. But Aquarius, you know, like it's happening because it's good for everybody. It's going to be jolting, but it's that thing that's going to jolt you into the right place. That is the energy of Uranus. Sorry, dog hair everywhere, guys. I clean my house all the time. Who would have thought? Three dogs. <laughs> dogs, dogs everywhere. Hair everywhere. Um, so we are going to pull today from... I'll explain it first. So this Mars in Gemini, in general, right? Like Mars is energy, Gemini is mutable air. So even <laughs> when Mars does station direct, things still might be a little like, bah, you know, unless mutable energy serves you well, you know, like Mercury retrograde serves me well because my natal chart loves Mercury retrograde. You know, if you work well with this mutable energy, I don't. I'm a very grounded, practical person. Like if things can just be stable all the time, that's when I thrive, you know. Um, but so Mars, passion, vitality, go, 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 do, do, do in Gemini to me seems just like a little scattered. So I, I brought two decks today that are my practical, grounded, real life advice uh, decks. A little bit less woo-woo, a little bit more grounded. So our main reading today is going to come from Ask Your Guides. This is one of my favorite practical, no BS type decks. So let me get my incense going and then we will pull three cards. If you are new to my oracle readings, I do group readings, so I'm going to allow your guides to work with my guides, and we will let three cards fall out of the deck for us. So before I shuffle, I invite you to send your energy into my deck. <clears throat> We want to ask today. With Mars in Gemini, what are like where where would our focus serve us best throughout the remainder of Mars in Gemini? And you know what? If someone I would look it up right now, but insight timer streams make my computer go really slow. So if someone can look up when Mars leaves Gemini, just so we can get a date for this. When does Mars enter Cancer? Oh, it's in March! Because um, I know it's right around the time of my retreat. I remember Mars enters Cancer right before. So I think uh, like March 25th? March 15th. Thank you, Kay. So we're asking Mars for the next two months how um, Because we don't want to use the word should, right? Because we should never do anything. 
it's all about choosing. So what, oh, how did I just say it? In what ways can we use our energy that would serve our highest goods for the next two months? In what ways can we use our energy? Which areas of our life are calling for us to use our energy, our Mars, our vitality, our drive, our passion? So I will allow the three cards to fall out as they do. Then I'm gonna show you the backs of the cards. So I'm saying this right now, if they are going to physically look the exact same. I'm showing you the back of the card deck. However, we're here to practice our intuition because we're all psychics, guys. Every single one of you has psychic abilities. Uh, it's just about remembering them, tapping into them, practicing them. So we can focus to see if you might see a glimmer in the card, you know, you might, something about the energy of a certain card might just draw you, you know, it might just look different. Um, physical things too, you know, like some people's phones will glitch when I hold up a certain card. That's your guides talking to you. That's your guides saying like, hey, pay attention to that card. You might feel physical senses. You might get a tingle. You might have a muscle twitch. You might have an itch somewhere. Uh, you might feel like you might hear a ringing in your ears when I hold up a certain card. You might taste something when I hold up a certain card. Like anything, any sense available to your human body, your guides will use that to send you messages. That's why mindfulness is so important because it really connects you to the, uh, the ethereal realm, right? I see. Jackie already knows that she's working with two and three, so Jackie is practicing her Claire Cognizance, as well as Jennifer, who knew that she was working with card one. So Claire Cognizance is when you just know. So you might just know a number between one and three today. Good morning, Rochelle. Welcome, welcome. We are just getting going on our group reading, asking Mars, where he would like us to focus throughout the rest of his time in Gemini. So for the next two months. Um, and then I'll say this now, if you're not drawn to any one card in particular, that does not mean that there's nothing in this reading for you. That is the exact opposite. It means that every single card of this reading has something for you today. If you are drawn to one or two specific cards, that's your guides just saying like, hey, extra pay attention to that message. This whole reading is designed for all of us, right? But sometimes there's just one thing that is looking for more attention than the others. <laughs> Jen, I love it. Late joining, glad to be here. Talk to us, Mars. I love it. If you guys are ever uh, late to the readings, I always put the replays up on YouTube. You can just search my name on YouTube and um, give me a follow there. I usually try to post them like the afternoon at the latest of the day that I do Insight Timer, but I'm a human. All right, Lucy's feeling all three. Helen knows she's working with three. I'm going to show you the backs of the cards, so again, they're gonna look the exact same, but let's focus on the rest of our physical senses. You know, don't expect anything, just notice. Just notice. Here is the back of card number one. The back of card number two. And the back of card number three. I'll show them one more time just in case, but if you have some resonating feelings, go ahead and throw the numbers in the chat. Here again is the back of card number one. Back of card number two. And the back of card number three. is working with two, three, and one in that order. Two is the foundation to build three and one upon. 
Jamie's working with one, Bonnie one and three, Rosie oh two, Jennifer one and three, with two supporting the messages, kind of like K. Yeah, I love that. Uh, Jen, my eye keeps twitching when I think three. Exactly, exactly. If you guys ever have a thing happen and, and you want to ask someone, like, is that a sign? Like, if you're looking for validation from your friend, like, something just happened. Is that? Do you think that's a sign? The answer is always yes. If you think, if you have that inkling that this might be a sign, it's a sign. Amanda May thought three. Then when you showed the backs, oh, my chat just jumped. When you showed the backs, my tummy made a little growl as soon as you showed card three. Yes, I love it, Amanda May. Chris, two and three. Ginger, one and three. Amy, two. Christine, one, three. Catherine, two. Kim, one and two. Kaz, two and I think three. Amanda May, definitely three. Michelle, two, Sue, one, Anik, good morning. You're working with card one today. Brenda, one for the head, two for the heart, three is neutral. I like it. Jennifer, three for sure. Bonnie, we talked about working with the sun in my one-on-one. -on -one. Yes, that's the one card. Guides are offering two special messages in three as Katie felt three the first time and then the stream stuck on the first card the second go around interesting I can see them both working for you today Christine realized my eye was watering at two so all three I guess okay one is for expansion the stars being handed to us two uh, love and grounding three scared nervous turn and in, tune into that excitement love it. Suzanne felt increasing warmth. Three is greater than two is greater than one. Ooh, I like it. I like it. I like it. All right, guys. How would Mars like us to use our energy for the next two months? If card number one resonated with you, Mars and the Holy Spirit today are pulling you to family. This is card number 10. Keywords for family are security, elation, peace, family harmony. The Holy Spirit is touching your soul, bringing about a deeper sense of peace and security. The challenges of the recent past are met, and thankfully, you've survived. Due to the Holy Spirit's influence, your trials have only strengthened your capacity to love leaving you with an even deeper appreciation of those you love. The Holy Spirit particularly shines on your family and home as it heeds your prayers and oversees overall well-being at this time. There's no need to fret over your parents' health, your children's safety, or your siblings' happiness. All is well. Ask the Holy Spirit to expand your capacity to move beyond personal love and include all of humanity in your prayer for peace. Entreat the Holy Spirit to brighten your aura and allow others to see you as a source of contentment. The Holy Spirit's message, peace be with you. So what I'm getting from this message mostly is just relax, allow, be grateful for your family, right? Whether that is blood family or chosen family, trust that the universe is supporting everyone that you love. Enjoy your time with them because embracing that feeling of love and connection will just bring greater things to you and to them. The energy of worrying is only going to contract your energy and the energy of the person you're worrying about. Giving it up to the Holy Spirit will allow the universe to come in and swoop in and take over and be able to deliver all of those blessings and deliver all of the love that you want to give to your family, blood or chosen. How did that family card resonate with you guys? Jess said, supposed to be working with threes this moon cycle, and I really didn't get any special hits, so I'm taking all three, paying extra attention to three. I love it. 
Anik, that is not what I thought was coming for number one. What do you mean, Anik? Jennifer says, amazing. Let's see how that plays off with the rest of the cards in this reading. Jamie, amazing. I love it. So, actually, I wonder, that wasn't my card, but it really resonated with me and the bliss that's going on. I love it, Jackie. Jamie, what a relief. Bonnie, beautiful card, totally resonates. <sighs> Guest says, so true. My sister passed away on Christmas morning and worried about family and glad this says they'll be okay. I'm very sorry to hear that. But it's all about that trust. When, when our loved ones pass to the other side also, having trust that the universe will support them on their journey allows them to step into their next incarnation. You know, like allow, allowing the universe to support our loved ones that have passed allows our loved ones to continue to walk into their highest path. Um, when we have this energy of sadness and holding on, in a way we can be holding them back from walking into their highest incarnation. Love to you, guest. Anik, I felt, oh, that's so nice when you showed card one. So I went with that. To me, this seems like it is so nice. It's less pressure on you and, you know, more release to the universe. Becky just got through surgery and I feel closer to my family who supported me. I've been inspired lately to keep that closeness. I love it, Becky. Suzanne says, Jackie, same, feel good about my family right now, grounded, and I trust that they are okay. <sighs> Actually, yeah, yesterday was the third anniversary of my sister's husband passing. Um, and I, I asked to channel him through my tarot reading yesterday morning, and I got some messages for him, from him, and it was just, yeah, a beautiful way to honor him. Christine, it resonated with me cultivating more love in my heart for all the good of beings. Amanda May, so much love and light to you and your family guest. You're beautiful, Amanda May. Katie, this makes sense to me. It just, I think it came second because it's important for me to keep that as an integral foundation for me to have, but that three will be my main focus to work on. Oh, Katie, my childhood friend passed away last night. Thank you for helping me feel peace. There's been so much loss lately. I just have to address it because I feel like every time we're coming on here recently, like everyone is sharing losses. So thank you for being vulnerable and, you know, sharing that with the group. That's not, you know, a fun thing to share around, guys. Nothing has to be good or bad, right? Everything just is. This is happening for your highest and greatest good. Trusting the universe. The universe loves you. The universe does everything for you. Nothing is happening to you. The more we can embrace that, the more we can understand the lessons that are meant to come from these losses. It's just... It just wasn't the right time, the right place for all of these things. It is unfortunate, you know, it sucks. You lose someone that you love, It's, it can suck. Let's see what card number two brings for you guys. Helen, yes, remembering it is not truly a loss. That person is moving into their new galactic energy. Yes, nothing is a punishment, yeah. Yeah, my brother-in-law passed January of 2020, so right before the world flipped upside down. And my way of thinking about it is that he was too... Like, the way that he... The body that he was in was not enough for him to make an impact on the world right now. Like, he needed to ascend into a different type of energy to help the world with what's going on right now. Because he was just brilliant. Just an amazing guy. I honor him. Card number two, guys, comes from Mars, 
speaking with our divine goddess. Number nine, and the card is pleasure. So this card's keywords are fulfillment, abundance, satisfaction, and contentment. The divine goddess smiles upon you, urging you to step into her luscious and beautiful garden and drink from her well of vitality and joy. Relax, have fun, and allow the good times to roll. Life is to be enjoyed, not endured. Whether it's a fun day at a beach or a rousing sexual romp with your lover, the Divine Goddess reminds you that there's nothing holy, superior, or righteous in resisting pleasure and hiding your beauty. She has stepped into your life to remedy the sad fact that you're not taking joy in much of anything of late, and that you have lost your touch with your beauty. Life is at risk of becoming too black and white in your missing color. She sweetly advises you not to postpone your rewards until you're in heaven. Instead, she encourages you to enjoy a little heaven on earth. Indulge your soul in some delicious food, good music, close friends, and playful fun. Use her sparkle to inspire you and embellish your environment. Redecorate. Add a splash of color to your beige walls. Bring in fresh flowers and make yourself beautiful as well. Perhaps try a new, a new hairstyle. Dab on a sexy cologne, buy new clothes, Overall, accept yourself as a beautiful human being. This is a harvest, a time of abundance and flow. Share your beauty with others. Be generous and don't fret about overindulging or getting carried away. Get used to the beautiful life and consider it your birthright to dance in the divine goddess's garden. Her question to you, how good can you stand it? goosebumps affirmations spoke directly to me exactly we're here to be fully present and joyful in all the dimensions yes don't forget to enjoy your life life is meant to be enjoyed not endured i love that line this came up with a client the other day and that just hit us both like oh life is meant to be enjoyed you are gifted a place here on this earth right here right now you can choose to enjoy it, right? That actually came up in my tarot this morning. I was asking, like, what messages the universe want me to know in order to, you know, continue to manifest the life of my dreams. And essentially what came out is like, you have it. You're telling yourself that you don't. It's there. It's in front of you. Stop looking for it and just look at it. So, same thing. Let your hair down. Don't hold back. Venus in Aquarius, love the way that you want, like flaunt yourself the way that you want. Don't worry about rules. Don't worry about politeness. Don't worry about social, like social, whatever. <laughs> as long as you act from a place of love, who cares what you do? If people are offended by what you do, that's their problem. And that just means that they're not meant to be in your life. If you hold yourself back, for the reason of being accepted by others, you're never you're never gonna find that self love, because how are you supposed to love um, a, a like a fake version of yourself? You know, the more you just let it go, you will attract the people that are meant to love who you are. You got it. So flaunt it. Yeah, if you wanna, you know, do a crazy new hairstyle, just go do the crazy new hairstyle. If you want to uh, try a new perfume because you like it and your your significant other says that they don't like it, like sorry, <laughs> this is this is what I want to smell like all day. You know what I'm saying? Plus, who cares what others think if you are happy? Oh yeah, like, oh yeah, I would much rather be happy with myself than get the va the external validation from people who are just acting from their own shadow. You know, like maybe some days they'll like me, maybe some days they won't. I can't 
try to change myself all the time to make them happy. This is all about me. And it's all about you too, you know? Like that, that, that word selfish, I hate the word selfish. It doesn't exist. It's, it, I feel like that word selfish was put on this earth to make us feel guilty for caring about ourselves. But that's our number one priority. I am my number one priority. You are your number one priority. It's okay to put yourself first. It's necessary to put yourself first. I also wanted to bring up with this card, the fact that we, a lot of us have been experiencing loss recently, you know, especially within the last three years, a lot of loss happening, a lot of remembering that we still have this gift of this life. Anique, love that. I have to be reminded to create and say yes to enjoyment. Mm -hmm. The more you say yes to things that lift you up, it seems, right? The fear response is like, oh, but if I don't make time for my work, then my work's going to get out of control. Opposite. The reality is the more you say yes to things that feel good, the more you say yes to things that, you know, fill you up, the more filled up you're going to be in order to tackle the things that you need to do. You know, the more, you know, I love being lazy and I'm owning it. If I want to sit down for an hour in the middle of my day, I get to sit down for an hour in the middle of the day. You know why? Because after that hour, I'm going to be so much more vital to do what I need to do for the rest of the day. Rather, if I were to just plunge through and say, nope, this is my duty. I have to do this. No, I'm honoring myself. You got to honor yourself sometimes and it's okay. Sharon, so far both cards resonated. My sister is visiting with my niece and we're planning to go to the rainforest, some, uh, some caves and go whale watching. They come to the warm waters to meet here in Puerto Rico. I love that. Yeah, enjoy it. Take pleasure in your human incarnation. It's meant to be in, uh, enjoyed, not endured. When people are telling us they think we ought to, they are projecting what they prefer when they can be acting on their own opinions for themselves. Yes, absolutely, Helen. Christine, this was important for me to hear. I've been working on being more my authentic self instead of pleasing others. It's a scary step to take. It's a scary step to take. No sound, says Helen. Let's try that. Do you guys have sound now? I made a switch. Oh, Katie has sound. I'm going to try to go back because I want to use this microphone. Thank you, Mercury Retrograde, for playing with our technology. Let's see, everyone else can hear? All right, cool. Cool. All right, thanks, guys. Let's get to card number three. Card number three comes from our divine soul, working with the energy of Mars, because we asked Mars where to focus for the next two months. This is card, okay, just lost it. I'm just gonna wait because I love this message and I wanna make sure you guys can hear. Now it's gone. All right, so, all right, card number three today is number 47. Add up those numbers, what's four plus seven? And what's today's date? This is an 11 card, I love it. 11. Um, and this comes from our divine soul alongside Mars, because today we asked Mars where our focus would be best utilized over the next two months while he works his way through Gemini. Message number 47 is psychic awareness. This is my favorite card in the deck. This is the first card that I ever received from this deck. The keywords are clairsentience, clairvoyance, reception, telepathy. 
Your divine soul is awakening, and with it, your psychic abilities are coming alive. More evolved and specific than basic intuition, your psychic faculties are giving you access to the fourth dimension and are coming into contact with enlightened helpers who can assist and guide you in beautiful ways. You may start accessing divine music or tap into new healing energies. You may also receive telepathic messages and have clairvoyant visions. Heed your newly aroused psychic faculties and don't doubt the specific and profound transmissions flowing to you. Record your dreams, believe in your hunches, and accept the symbols and signals being relayed to you from the psychic realm. Trust your vibes and embrace your psychic channels fully. What they're communicating is essential to fulfilling your purpose. Ask your divine soul to lead you. Its message, embrace and trust what you receive. We are in the year of the seven, 2023. Add all those numbers to get together. That gives you a seven. Lucky number seven, seven chakras, seven days of the week, mystical, spiritual awakening, right? Psychic awareness. Your psychic awakening is happening. First two months, first two and a half months of 2023. Yeah, definitely uh, awakening inside of all of you guys. This card reminds us to just pay attention to the messages. Um, notice them. You know, I was saying earlier, if you think something is a sign, surprise, it all it always is. Everything is always a sign. Your, your guides are always communicating with you. Nothing is a coincidence. Um, just notice. Just notice and appreciate. And I'm trying to think of anything. And, the, the, you know, it's something that I've been developing the more I tap into it, right? So if I'm here on Insight Timer, this happens a lot, actually. I'll be here and I'll be, like, sharing some wisdom, just going on a, a rant about whatever I feel like ranting about. And then my ear starts ringing. And that, through time, I've learned that that's my guide saying, yes, keep talking about that. Like, you got it. Like, we're affirming that, you know? So things like that, you know, if you're driving to work and you keep seeing the same kind of animal on the side of the road, maybe look up what the meaning of that animal is. Like, what is nature trying to show you about your life? Uh, every, everything is a coincidence. You're not, <laughs> nothing is a coincidence. <laughs> oh, I love it. Oh, let's see. Tap into your guides and have a great conversation, Helen. Yes. Um, the time has prevented us from pulling a final card, so I'm going to use the signs. I'm not going to force anything today. We are going to wrap it up in about five minutes. Um, so just those three messages for us today. This will go on YouTube. I might have to do two separate videos. I'll see if I can play with editing stuff because technology is not my favorite thing in the world, but I'll see what I can do. But I do love putting all the replays up on YouTube, and I will be putting... Uh, a text update in our spiritual community, the group that I have here on Insight Timer, so you can review the messages and read over them. Helen says, all systems go with your intuition and psychic downloads. Yes, Suzanne, wow. Jennifer, whoa, spot on for me. Jess, ah, I thought I got no hits. This is spot on for all the other messages I've been receiving lately. Yes, guest says my number for everything is seven. Always, this is your year. Here we go, Rose. Katie says, um, I have a very distinct vibration that I'm learning to trust and follow. Yes, Christine loves it. Suzanne three was my card and when the sound went out before card three, I was like, oh no, but here it is. That must have been like a little test, you know, like the sound went out and it was your guides just like to play with you to see, like, are you going to hang out and wait for her to fix that? Or are you going to jump ship because it's not perfect, you know? Mm. 
Uh, who else? Kay says this is so aligned with the Oracle card I pulled this morning. I love it. Katie, thank you. You're welcome. Jackie, thank you for your donation. Very much appreciated. Namaste. See you next week. If you guys have enjoyed today's session, all the astrology knowledge, all the messages from the cards, if you'd like to offer an energy exchange in the form of a donation, they are always appreciated. Never expected. If you um, want to work with me one-on-one, -on -one, you can find my personal website on my Insight Timer bio, lakesidelivinghealer.com. We can do some card readings. We can do some Akashic Record readings. We can do some Reiki healing. We can look at your astrology chart. I do a whole bunch of stuff. Um, and I also just sent out an email this morning to the subscribers to my email list. Uh, it's my first official marketing campaign for my retreat. So I am hosting a women's retreat in March right after Pluto steps into Aquarius. This retreat is called Aquarius Adventures. I am inviting all of my holistic spiritual women to join me, max of 12, just because beds and sleeping. <laughs> but uh, it's a, a very different retreat probably from anything you've ever heard of because I'm a very different person from anyone you've ever met. But it's all Aquarius values, so community, collaboration. So instead of me trying to do it all, right? I'm asking that every person who comes brings a little gift to share with the collective. If that is giving, you know, mini reflexology sessions if you're a massage therapist, or if that is leading a simple yoga flow because you're a yoga teacher, or if that is leading a craft because you're just a crafty lady and creative expressions are the purpose of our existence, right? Creation. If you want to lead us in a creation, if you want to lead like a journaling experience, if you want to share your story, right? I, I, I get feedback from you guys all the time that you love when I share my personal stories. Like I do it because I, I'm hoping that you align with, you know, my, where I've been. So, you know, if you want to come, uh, and share your story to help enlighten others or you know a whole bunch of stuff if you make if you make your own cleaning products at home you know like teach us how to make cleaning products that don't have nasty chemicals in them there's a spot for everybody if you're here watching something like this you are a woo woo person like you have something that is able to help ascend humanity so come join us check it out on the website uh, ask questions, reach out to me if you're not sure what to offer, and it's going to be a magical experience. Thank you very much, Charlotte, for your donation. I love it. Uh, thank you, Suzanne, for your donation, and Sharon, very much appreciated. Jennifer and Keisha, I love you guys. Thank you so much. Charlotte, thank you, and I'm going to definitely check out your astrology course here lovely i think it's great um it's a lot of information so maybe take your notes helen follow your intuition and come to the retreat don't tell others what their intuition is saying remember you will be sharing who you are that is the supreme gift supreme gift bonnie so excited for the retreat if you are considering it come don't let leading or sharing hold you back I love empowering people. That's like my number one. If I could, if I could help everyone find an innate talent within themselves, my life would be complete. The dryer came. The dryer repairman came during my car. <laughs> oh, Bonnie. He didn't want you to hear it. I don't know. Interesting. The tribe continues to come together. Jana, thank you so much for your donation. Suzanne, thank you. The session was great, empowering, and I really enjoyed your vibe. Thanks, Suzanne. Likewise, as always. So trust that your family is good to go. You don't need to put that pressure on yourself. The Holy Spirit will help. Take pleasure in life. Enjoy what we have right now. You have human senses for a reason. Like, enjoy them, you know? And your psychic awareness is coming online. Pay attention to the messages that your guides and the universe are sending to you. And watch the trust emerge. 
Thank you so much. I will be here Wednesday next week for our Mercury Direct session. Namaste. Love to all. Take care. I will see you very soon.